Now, the Trade Union Congress, DUC, says it is designing a clause in the framing of a new minimum wage that will sanction state governments who failed to pay the revised minimum wage when approved. The TUC President Festus Osifo made this known on Thursday. Osifo said the current minimum wage of 30,000 naira can no longer cater to the well-being of an average Nigerian worker. Lament that not all governors are paying the current wage award, which will expire by April, five years after the Minimum Wage Act of 2019 was signed by former President Muhammadu Buhari. Now, the act is to be reviewed every five years to meet with contemporary economic demands of workers. He said the sanction will require that the Federal or Federation Account Allocation Committee directly pay workers in states where government default on the payment of the new minimum wage when agreed on by labor unions, federal and state government, as well as the organized private sector. In the wake of this, the latest from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics says the nation's public debt stock rose from 87.91 trillion naira in the third quarter of last year to 97.34 trillion naira in the fourth quarter of the year. In its Nigerian Domestic and Foreign Debt Report for the fourth quarter of last year released on Tuesday in Abuja, the NBS said the nation's public debt stock, which included external and domestic debt, grew by 10.73% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. It puts the country's external debt at 38.22 trillion naira in the fourth quarter of last year, stressing that domestic debt stood at 59.12 trillion naira so far. Also, at a sectoral retreat organized by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources on ways to build synergy for enhanced development in the oil and gas sector, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil, Heineken Lukwobiri, said the solution to Nigeria's numerous challenges lies in the petroleum sector. But just how true is this? Well, keep an eye on all of these issues on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I have my guest right now, Mokhtar Mohammed, standing by to discuss all of these issues with me. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Good morning. All right, let's start with the issue of this um, minimum wage. The TUC President Festus Osifo is calling for sanctions for states that are defaulting in their payment. He said the sanction will require that the Federal, uh, the Federation Account and Allocation Committee, that is FAC, directly pays workers in state where governors default on the payment of the new wage when agreed on by labor unions, federal and state government, as well as the organized um, uh, private sector. But the thing right now, Mukhtar, is that this issue of minimum wage has been on for quite a while. We have been looking at it, and uh, it's supposed to be reviewed every four, um, four years. But you have followed all the high points on the committee meeting and several suggestions that have come out of them. Let's talk about uh, this, the Fulton State, for instance. Some are not even able to pay the 30000 naira after all these years. What happens right now with Labour pushing for more than 300% increment at different um, public hearings? Uh, some have said 60,000, some have said 70, even had gone as much as um, 700 to 300,000 now. So what do we do with all these present realities? Yes, um, Justin, we need to look at the minimum wage um, 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 constitution or whatever, the minimum wage um, um, the, well, I say play, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking for the English to, to, to but what I mean about the minimum bench, okay, the minimum wage benchmark. Um, we need to look at states. Ordinarily, every state needs to um, have its own minimum wage negotiation with the gov with the um, with their own labor congress in their own states. So that's what it means. The government is just supposed to set up a minimum wage and say that you will not pay below this level, then the state governors will begin to look at it. It doesn't mean that the grade level seven in um, in Lagos will collect the same thing with grade level seven in KB state because the cost of living in these two states are different. That's how minimum wage are done in developed economy of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not a straight line gap, graph that you say, oh, this is what's entailed, this is the percentage. And again, they also will also look at that for the Nigerian Labor Congress saying that the uh, government would we, we will not pay the defaulting state will pay the workers directly i think uh, that is going too far because that is not the meaning of the constitution how do you uh, 
work on that? How do you go about that? How do you say the state of default so you should pay the, the, the worker directly? So I don't think that will work. But you know, that's part of the pressure the Nigerian Labor Congress will be putting on the government to make sure that the 14 states are made to pay the law. But again, like I said, uh, most states will have to negotiate their own minimum wage based on their own allocation, based on their own revenue, based on their own uh, um, projection. Because what we see is that um, at the end of the day, a lot of states seem to be paying just minimum wage and there's no development. Yeah. And the same workforce will not want them to be reduced. Sometimes the government will say, okay, we have to bring down um, do uh, we have to, to 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 let some workers go so that we'll be able to pay the wages and they will come again and say no you must pay without even even disengaging some workers so it's it's an ongoing negotiation the negotiation between the Nigerian Labour Congress the Trade Union Congress is uh, for for the government uh, to put up a minimum benchmark after that I believe that uh, the state governors will be negotiating with their various labour union to have their own. And remember, because it is not um, um, constitutionally or um, because of the type of constitution we run, even if we are not practicing it to the fullest, the first president cannot enforce the state to pay the minimum, uh, the, the wage reward of 35000 yeah. You know, the last time he had a meeting with the governors, he has to appeal to them that he will appeal to governors to be able to pay. He appealed to them, not, not mandating them or instructing them that you must pay. All right, Ben Mukhtar, you are, uh, you are an economist and uh, you are aware of what's going on. Let me just uh, play a bit of um, devil's advocate here. You know, 60,000, 80,000, over 300,000. But we know what the issue is with the country with inflation and uh, other economic um, indices. And uh, inflation is over 30%. And as it is right now, in your opinion, what would be a real minimum or living wage as it is that, should, that can really cater to some of these present issues that we are battling with? Justin, you know, I've talked about structural reform. And sometimes when we talk about minimum wage, we're only just looking at the salary. We're not looking at some of these structural reforms. Oh, okay. Structural reform could come in the sense of a, ta a tax holiday for civil servants for a time being. Structural reform could come also with a more, some allowances being paid to civil servants. These are structural reforms that will be embedded in some of these uh, um, 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 negotiation. But all we think about negotiating, we think about negotiating or the wage must go up. Immediately the wage goes up is like they send a message to the market women and say your wage have gone on, so increase your price of your goods. So if you if you if I sit down here today looking at the con current economic reality on ground. I would say, um, if you look at inflation, like you say, inflation is about 31%, but you and I know that inflation has gone beyond that. So uh, I think um, the Nigerian Labor Congress should be negotiating for a minimum wage of the, being realistic, maybe you say a minimum wage of, of, of over 100,000 for startup point. Mm. Yeah, you could take it up at other structural uh, uh, reforms to make sure that we become a living wage. Because when you talk about the minimum wage, sometimes you, if the minimum wage as it stands to that, if I start correct, it's about 18,000. Mm. And if the government says we have increased the minimum wage by 200%, how much is that? So you need to look at how much percentage you, you are looking at because the government will come from the side. Most governments in the world work pay and buy inflationary pressure. It's mm -hmm. okay, inflation is 31%. Okay, if that's the case, we are going to increase the minimum wage by 45% or whatever. But you know in our own cause, if you do that, that mean you just move the, the, the goalposts a little. But the cost of living mm -hmm. is still high, especially when uh, most of these workers have to pay other things like... Um, uh, school fees, um, housing that are not given to them. But in the developed economy, some of these things are knocked off. You, you don't pay, you okay. don't pay school fees. Uh, uh, so you send your children to a good uh, public school. But here, you know, we know what the public school systems are. Right. So that's why we're talking about the structural uh, negotiation. Structural negotiation could also come with um, the, them telling the government that you need to make our public school um, uh, uh, very conducive so that our children will be going there, and that will reduce. The, burden, the financial burden on us. Okay, before we leave um, the minimum wage uh, dilemma and talk about uh, the public debt and other matters uh, very quickly, I need to understand, maybe it's all in my head, but don't you think that the law for minimum wage should be revised to review these wage issues maybe on an 
annual basis so that there'll be like a representation of the true picture of things and also ensure that the issues like uh, these don't just pop up and the government might seem so overwhelmed to handle all the exponential increments. For instance, I'm sure in the UK it is done on an annual basis, but for Nigeria here, it is done um, uh, fi every five years. So, so what's, what's your thought, really? Just even as in my thought is that uh, Ordinarily, do we need to set up a committee to begin to review the wages yeah. when you look at that things have gone high? And it's normal for any sensitive government or any sensible government to look at it and say, look, things are not the same. In the US and in the UK that you are talking about, they don't have the National Minimum Wage Committee. That will not, they don't have the Minimum Wage uh, Standing Committee that will not sit down and say, okay, this is the wage. You, you, it's, it's all embedded that oh, if they, they, they base their wage on economic data. When they look at the economy data, inflation is high. They look at um, the purchasing power because they have all this data. Companies just decide to increase the wages. And sometimes, like you said, these wages are not uh, uh, um, all-time high, like what we, we experience by living it for the next five years. Sometimes these wages are maybe just 5%, sometimes just 10%. But again, that goes by with the inflationary um, data that mostly, mostly until recently, which was the highest in U.S. history for over 50 years, the inflation doesn't go above maybe 3%, 2% until recently that went above 10%. And at that time, what they did was to do a structural reform, whereby in some states, like uh, they, they, they have to stop paying petroleum taxes, they have to, so, so those are the kind of reform that, and then some of the companies also increase their salaries of their workers and where when you remove the tax and uh, petroleum tax and all that you see that they were any more so that's why we are saying that as nigerian labor congress is negotiating a living wage they should more or less look at the structural mm. wage mm. so that these are not uh, things that are eating up the minimum wage after you must have negotiated it already all right let's leave um the national minimum wage for a moment and look at other issues let's talk about our public uh, debt uh, so far, the latest data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics says that the country's public debt stock rose from 87.91 trillion naira, which represents about $114 billion in the third quarter of last year, to 97.34 trillion naira, which is about uh, $108 billion in um, uh, clear terms. That's for the fourth quarter of last year. Uh, just on a general basis, uh, how are we really doing in terms of um, our debt stock, uh, debt servicing, and all of that? Well, I think for debt servicing, we should say we have been able to be paying. Uh, if you look at what the GMO said, they've been able to pay some of this debt. So it's a good thing. So that makes us a good um, creditor. So a lot of a lot of countries will still want to give us debt. So that's a plus. Um, secondly, what I'm excited about this debt proof, I know that you're excited when you own debt, because there, there's a saying that they say no debt is a good debt. <laughs> no debt is a good debt. Some people say it's a good debt because uh, you are putting it into uh, productive ventures. But no debt is a good debt because you still have to pay those debts. <laughs> so there's nothing good about that. So, uh, and so what, I'm, what I'm saying is that um, you, you look at the, the, the public debt, I mean, the, that the internal debt, is about 66%. For me, that is good compared to the external debt of 38%. If you talk, twist it mm. the other way, if external debt was 66%, then we'll be talking with the current exchange rate, we'll be talking an addition of almost um, almost 200%. And when it comes to internal debt, I think those are manageable because you could also begin to look at giving a coupon uh, um, for to them that look, we, 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 you, you, can you buy? Can we give you a, a bond like what was done some time ago by the then Minister of Finance? And so you remit this bond and we pay you gradually based on an interest. So that, that can work. But when it comes to international debt, you have to pay it and you have to pay that address. So uh, the debt profile is not something exciting, but again, it is what is there. And when you look at the state that are owing debt, you look at Lagos State and you, it, it, when you look at their economic activities, I think they have the where within to pay off this debt because when you look at their revenue bar and by the debts that they are owing, you realize that they have all the capability to pay. But sometimes you have problems when you have some states that uh, cannot, um, can barely pay. So the, when the, the labor is complain, complaining about some state not be able to pay minimum wage, some states don't get the kind of allocation that they used to get because after deduction, well, some of these debts are left with nothing sometimes with just nothing to, to do other, other things with. 
So, but again, we should be happy that the president has also done very well um, in terms of uh, took the bull step, they took the bull by the horn and they removed the minimum wage um, from, from, I mean, removed it for a subsidy. So what we've seen that a lot of states are earning more money, um, but again, it's not reflective on the people. So that is why I will appeal to Nigerians, instead of always putting pressure on the top and the center, we should also begin to look at our state government and our, our, and our local government, because they seem to have earned more, more, more revenue since the advance of uh, President Bolati to power. All right, uh, as we round off now, Mokta, I just want to find out if you agree with this uh, postulation uh, that uh, the solution to the nation's uh, problems lie uh, in the petroleum sector. Well, that's the, what the Minister of um, State for Petroleum Resources, Heineken Lokobiri, uh, seems to believe. Because, in my opinion, we've always been talking, uh, people have been talking about, uh, you know, diversifying and uh, not really so focusing on the, you know, oil and gas sector. I know, uh, you know, fintechs and other sectors are, are really doing well right now in the country. But do you really think that um, petroleum sector is what, or the panacea to all of the challenges that we have in the country? Well, in the short term, is the solution. That's what I would say. <laughs> okay. Because it's the cash cow. Mm. Yeah, it's the cash cow. Uh, when you look at FX that we earn in, from other sectors, non-oil sector, even when the petroleum sector is producing less than uh, maybe even 10% of the GDP, it seems to be the only one that brings in that FX. So for the short term, it is the king, it's the, it's the cash cow. So we need to pay more attention to it. We need to make sure we wrap up production. We need to make sure that we create a conducive um, investment environment to attract investors into that sector. We need to um, deal with the insecurity in that sector. We need to deal with oil theft also. So for me, I think, yes, uh, in the short term. But what other developed countries in the world have done is to use their main cash card to begin to develop other streams of income. So I, 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 for me, I agree. But I think we should not just stay there. We should use that place as a springboard to develop other sector revenue and from uh, from there, so that we can have multiple multiple source of um, revenue coming to our economy. So I totally agree with it. But it's in the short term using your cash card to develop other streams of income. Mukta Mohammed Mukta Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst, and he joined us now to look at all of um, these issues concerning the minimum wage and our debt profile. Thank you once again for always doing justice to all of these issues. Thank you, Justin. Have a pleasant weekend. You too. And uh, that's the size of the show, but I'll leave you with this one. It's a focus on industrialization, uh, and it was done somewhere by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Many thanks for being a part of the show. I am Justin Akadonye. Captains of industries, organized private sector, the United Nations Industrial Organization, UNIDO, and the federal government, among others, have converged on this hall. The key theme here is setting the agenda for competitive manufacturing under the AFCFTA, what Nigeria needs to know. Otumba Francis Meshuye is the president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MEN. He hits the ground running by lamenting the slow rate of industrialization in Nigeria and the challenges affecting the performance of manufacturers. Other speakers believe that the AFCFTA can be achieved if stakeholders address the challenges affecting the nations. We need to develop the right strategies and concerted efforts to position our economy as the number one manufacturing hub of the African economy. Evidences from several parts of the world, including China, United States, Japan, Germany, South Korea, have told the importance of the manufacturing sector in building a resilient economy. The FCSCA is not just an agreement. It is a platform for collaboration, even beyond the walls of Nigeria. How do we reach for regional integration that will give us competitive manufacturing? Nigeria must actively engage in regional and continental cooperation with the following steps. The steps that will bolster regional integration 
we must strengthen our commitment to regional integration by harmonizing trade and manufacturing policies with other AFCFTA state parties. This is why we have continued to prioritize the critical infrastructure and the implementation of policies and strategies aimed at improving the ease of doing business and strengthening the productive capacity of MSMEs across all sectors. The former Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Lushegwa Ganga, takes to the stage. He is of the opinion that embracing competitive manufacturing under the AFCFTA is crucial for Nigeria's economic growth and integration into the global market. He says Nigeria may not be able to compete with China now, but it can be a hub in Africa by investing in infrastructure, innovation, and skilled labor while addressing trade barriers. It is important to make it absolutely clear from the outset that in modern global economy, industrial development is not luck. Industrial development does not happen by accident. It is a nation's choice. Countries must therefore have an intentional, precise, and intense approach to nurturing and expanding industrial activities. In all, the experts say to become a prosperous nation with a strong Naira and reclaim its position as a jewel of Africa, Nigeria must industrialize.